KRA finally has access to your bank accounts and your M-Pesa details, or I would say mobile money details, mobile transaction details. And this is going to be something that most people might have their opinions over or have very divided opinions. And this was part of the finance bill 2024 as well. One of those bills that people fought so much not to see the light of day. But this was one of the things in there that was supposed to be coming through. So anyway, finally, they have been given the go-ahead. The court has given them the go-ahead to have access to your M-Pesa and to your bank details. What does this mean for the common man? That's the question, right? Because you're asking yourself, okay, now they have access to all my financial transactions. What does it mean for me? What does it mean for the country? What does it mean for average people? People are just making their genuine money transacting. M-Pesa or mobile transaction, mobile money transaction has been actually put at that category whereby if it was interrupted today, we would face a proper economic turmoil. That means it has become a critical bit of our economy. And therefore, if KRA has been given access to all these things, and now they have even told the institutions to start, they have told the financial institutions to start integrating their systems uh, so that they're in a position to see all these details, then it's something that we definitely have to talk about. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know what your idea is about this. But yeah, let's discuss a few of the pros, the cons of this and see where this is going to take us as a, as a people. Let's see how this is going to impact us. You know, you know, people are working, people are transacting every day. And is this something that you should be worried about? And is this something that the government is just trying to get too close to your money? And are you worried about it? Remember here, Case Money Matters to talk about the money mindset, how to make that money, how to enjoy that money, how to manage that money, how to invest that money, and how to assure yourself of a lifetime of income. Basically, financial freedom. So, Kenya Revenue Authority is the revenue authority for those who are watching from other countries. This is the revenue authority, same as the IRS in the US, same as the HMRC in the UK, and same as Canada Revenue Agency or the CRA in Canada. All those countries basically it's the revenue authority so if you're watching from somewhere else when i say kra i mean kenya revenue authority they're the ones in charge of collecting money taxes and making sure that those taxes are properly distributed within the economy and to the right places so so there has been a case in court kra wanted to have access to mpesa and bank accounts directly so they can snoop and check those uh, people are defaulting on uh, taxes uh, generally speaking it's a strategy of making more money president Duto wanted to reduce the amount of money that the country borrows from outside and try to raise as much money locally as possible of course raising money locally would mean that kra has the capacity to raise enough money kra has been missing its target in terms of revenue collection for a long time reasons being they say they do not have access to some of these things they do not really have the intelligence to know who is evading taxes they do not have the means of collecting taxes properly um, and a lot of people just don't pay their taxes so they have been missing their targets for a long time and when president Duto came into power one of the things he mentioned clearly and really uh, campaigned on was that he's going to reduce the amount of borrowing external borrowing and try to ensure that we are self-sufficient self-sufficiency just means we're in a position to run ourselves you cut your coat according to your size and run your own economy not based on borrowing and external debts but based on money that you're producing in your own country now this one has pros and cons because in a country like kenya there's runaway corruption and runaway corruption will always eat into the money that is always produced what happens when you have a deficit? You go outside and borrow. So you have a budget deficit of trillions or even billions. You go to these other world financial institutions or even locally in the domestic market and borrow money. But one of our biggest debt is external, actually. So in that case, what happens? You are beholden to the people who give you money. It's a bad place to be. But again, if you think about it, if we don't address corruption, if we don't address issues locally, are we in a position to actually manage our money even if you were to pay taxes? So obviously, initially based on data protection laws, KRA was not in a position to get into all these details, but now they're in a position to. And they can get into your bank account and snoop. They can get into your money transactions and snoop. So if you go and do your payment through pay bill numbers, uh, if you use what you call the ETIMS, if you use any kind of these electronic forms, they can monitor. Now they can even monitor your fuel consumption. So now when you go into a fuel station, you put in your identification number, they can see how much you're consuming in terms of fuel so that they can know, okay, how is this person doing economically? They get to know a lot of details about you using these uh, 
electronic integration system. Now, there's a lot of argument that this kind of law is going to disproportionately affect middle class and lower class people instead of the people who should actually pay taxes. Now, I agree to some level. I believe that people who have the capacity, the knowledge, and I would say the power to evade taxes in the country will not be affected by mobile money transactions, for example. These are people who deal with cash, billions and billions of money, and they know how to hide this money. And like I mentioned in my previous video about economic collapse, when money is leaving the economy, because most corrupt people and seriously corrupt, I'm not talking about small fish, I'm talking about serious corruption, the money is kept in other countries, the money is kept in other economies and hidden and doesn't give us any taxes. So when you are going hard on an economy and trying to force people to pay taxes and using every means possible to reach their pockets, what are you doing? Are you reaching the people you should be reaching to, the rich, or are you reaching just the normal common class person who is hustling so much to pay their bills to make sure they make some money to make sure that they, they they survive really so obviously this is something that will hit and i believe that a number of people a huge percentage of people using mpesa services are not the extremely rich people they are the middle class people and the low class people so if you look at these two groups of people if you impact them that's going to be a problem but again if you look at just our capital capitalistic system works capitalistic system works on the grounds of ensuring that the masses who are producing and working so hard to make money are the ones who are usually affected by such laws and such policies. It never really impacts the rich. And that's not just a folly of the Kenyan system, that's a folly of capitalistic system. It, that it gives a lot of leeway for rich people to evade taxes while actually stifling and stifling and making sure that the lower class and the middle class make as much, um, as little money as possible, or pay as high a taxes as possible because the people who actually have the knowledge, people who have the capacity to evade taxes are not just normal people. If they, are, they could be like high middle class, but people, normal people go to work every day, they pay their taxes diligently, they buy their houses through mortgage, they probably, you know, have a small side hustle somewhere that is very open and not hidden because they can't affect their, their public image. The people are concerned about all these things are mostly the middle class people. So yes, I believe that this law will definitely affect middle class people more than anyone else. We end up paying more taxes that then goes to the corrupt people who then takes the money out of the country and the, can the money doesn't end up helping us in any way. And that's where people are complaining. And so basically what we're talking about here is that KRN now is in a position to monitor all your pay bills um, transactions, all your bank accounts, all the apps you're using that could be, you know, um, be having any cash and all the apps used by businesses for cash receipts uh you know by business or individuals basically all the apps that are used by businesses or individuals for cash uh receipts so these are all the things that kra will have access to so the government is looking to collect almost 350 billion just with this kind of access and of course to achieve this they are trying to stifle people as much as possible they're trying to get into the system as much as possible they're trying to reach the evaders as much as possible i don't think this is generally a bad thing i'm not saying this is a terrible thing but i'm also saying that if we are going to be stifling the middle class and the lower class people to pay more taxes, we have to be accountable for that money. We have to know where that money is going to. We can't just be pay paying more taxes to then give to, you know, to other people to go and spend it how they want and go and keep it in other countries and, you know, build wealth for their own families. So is it something that will impact us positively when we pay more taxes? I don't think so. Now businesses and traders are expected to disclose sales to KRA and to integrate electronic tax system, the ETIMS, the new system. And if you fail to integrate that system and disclose your sales, then you are facing a fine of up to 2 million a month. Now you can imagine that amount of money if you put on a small business as a fine, that business is basically dead. So generally speaking, what do you think about this new law? What do you think about this access that the KRA is getting into your data? I, I think for me, the data breach is crazy. It's also the fact that um, we have to be protected when we give our data to any companies. Uh, and this is a law that shouldn't have gone through in all honesty. I think they should find other ways of collecting their taxes. They should find other, I would say, more intelligent ways of collecting tax taxes, meeting their deficit, and not trying to stifle the middle class. There are ways in which they can get more taxes. If the country is in a position whereby people are refusing to pay taxes, you need to address the issues behind that refusal and not just force them to pay more taxes. I think our focus as a country should be on addressing corruption, addressing mismanagement, addressing poor governance, addressing poor corporate culture, to ensure that we can actually use the money that we have 
to do something. So far, we're making a lot of money. We have a lot of debt, yes? We've borrowed so much money. We've collected so much money in the country. Where has the money gone? Our healthcare system is still shit. Our school system is still shit. Our infrastructure is not as great. I know there has been a good, you know, a good progress in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the rail system, in terms of the roads. But still, it's just within cities, really. It's not something that is so expansive. And the ones that have, were done, we know when they were done and who did them and where the money came from. So the real money that gets collected every day, where does it go to? Uh, infrastructure, like I say, is still far from where it should be. Basically, the economy, the pillars of the economy have a lot of issues that should be addressed. And we have been collecting this money consistently for many years. We need to question where this money is going. We need to, first of all, use what we have efficiently. Even from a financial literacy perspective, you use what you have, you manage what you have, what you're earning today before you start thinking about earning more. If you cannot manage what you're earning now, it doesn't mean that if you collect 350 billion more, now you're going to be well Manage and efficient with your resources, with your planning, and with your location. So I don't think this is something that's going to change much. It's just a way of impacting the middle class, those who are working hard to make their daily living, while leaving the rich people and the corrupt people to just go scot free and enjoy our money. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. This is a big change, but that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it.